to teach us this evening. So thank you so much, uh, Judy, for, for coming on tonight. And uh, I can't wait to hear what God has in store to, to, to tell us. So uh, I just want to open up in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you for this call. I thank you for this night. I thank you for this platform. Father, speak through Judy. I thank you that, that she is a uh, wonderful teacher. And I thank you that, that you are continuing to, uh, to reveal your truth to her. And, and tonight, as she speaks, let you come out and, and utilize her as your vessel. So I thank you for her, her obedience on teaching us tonight. And uh, just may your name be glorified. We cancel all distractions, anything, anything that, that is not in your will, anything that is um, uh, against you or any, and maybe anybody that is talking against you or your kingdom or even this platform. We cancel that, silence that, and that is null and void in Jesus' name, that only you and your kingdom shall prevail. As your word says, we are seeking your kingdom and all these things shall be added unto us. So, Father, we are seeking your kingdom. We are seeking your truth. We are seeking you. So we love you. We honor you. We glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Judy, thank you so much for, for joining us this evening. And the platform is yours. Thank you very much. All right, good evening. My gosh, I don't know why I feel so nervous. I'm hot over here. <laughs> I think God's getting ready to do something big. Um, I'm gonna start off with my testimony. I was gonna let everybody else share. Um, earlier today, I was talking to my kids and I just, I, kind of what Pastor Dan was already talking about, I just had been really in a ditch these last few weeks, just, feeling like that stuck in that cycle, feeling like nothing is coming into place and just not really knowing the direction I'm going in and feeling like I'm not doing enough with the kids and, and nothing was ever enough and everything was always wrong. And I finally just hit a brick wall on Sunday. And when I tell you that I already knew this was coming, I really already knew this was coming and this wasn't anything prophetic. I just knew better that when Pastor Lissette said, hey, I heard that God wants you to teach on the threshing floor, I was already like, I'm going to the threshing floor. <laughs> because if you know, if you've been through it, you know if you're going to teach on something, nine times out of 10, you're going to go through it first. 10 times out of 10, I like. 10 times out of 10, you're going to go through it first. Um, so when I hit that brick wall on Sunday, it wasn't a surprise, but it was necessary. Um, and it just was, I had to, I had to fall apart. I had to recognize that I couldn't do anything in my own strength. And these are all things that I know. These are all things that I've been through before, but I just had to get back to that place. I had to get back to that place of repentance, back to that place of going, God, I really have been trying to do this all on my own and I can't, I have to set real boundaries and I have to allow you to work through me in a way that helps everybody, even myself. Um, so I've just kind of been able to take a step back now and break things down into smaller chunks. And I'm surrounded by amazing people, Pastor Dan and Lissette and my husband, and people who really ground me and support me when I know um, that I can't do it on my own. So today I was talking to my kids and we have been talking a lot about the gates and talking about the music they listen to and all the YouTube videos they watch and all the things that they're allowing in to, um, into, their, into their mind, into their hearts. And it just kind of settled on me today. I started thinking about, um, I started thinking about that there was a philosopher in, in, Greek, in Greece and he philosophized that music literally shapes your emotions that music literally not only shapes your emotions and your thoughts but can cause you to do certain things and i thought that was interesting because we know that 
words have such power. This man, whether he knew God or not, tapped into the principle that everything that we speak, everything we hear creates. And so I started talking to my daughter about that. Mind you, she's only 11, and, but she's, she's very wise. And I started talking to her about that. And I said, you know, when God said, let there be light, literally he created light with the sound of his words. You know, we always think about that God created, but do we really think about that? He literally created by the sound of what he said. And so when I was thinking about that, and I was thinking of the scripture that said, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by um, God's word. And all of a sudden something just settled in my spirit. And I said, you know, it's good for us to hear the word. It's good for us to read the word out loud. It's good for us to hear teachings about the word. I said, God, but what happens if I listen to your word in the original Hebrew? What happens if I listen to the word as it was originally spoken? What's going to start happening in my house? So I went on YouTube and I pulled up, I told the kids to put away their phones and I pulled up a recording of the beginning of the Bible. I don't know, it was like a four hour video of someone reading the Bible in Hebrew. And I just left it on the table and I went about my business. Now it could have been a combination of them being annoyed that <laughs> they didn't know what this guy was talking about. And it was like extremely loud in the house. But after about an hour and a half, my other daughter said, can I turn that off? And she turned it off so that she could put on the Bible stories on the TV. And they started watching the Bible stories and I could hear them talking about it and they remembered it and they started discussing it. And I was like, God, even if it was just for the simple fact that they knew I wasn't going to let it go <laughs> and I wasn't going to allow anything except for the discussion or something about God to go on in the house, even if it was only that, it still created something that brought life. It still created a situation where the atmosphere in my house had to shift and they didn't have to understand what was being said, but it was life that was being breathed into my home. And I thought that was so incredible. And it really does play into the threshing floor because we have to allow our desires and our emotions and everything that's against God to be broken down. When those things are broken down, that's the time that God can gather us. That's the time that God can clean us up. So I'm going to start by talking just very factual about what a threshing floor is. Um, a lot of this information I got from Perry Stone. A lot of it was stuff that I just, you know, I researched and compiled. So if you are unfamiliar with what the threshing floor is, the threshing floor is literally the place that they would bring the, the, we'll just talk about the wheat harvest today. It's where they would bring the wheat harvest. And after it was harvested, they would bring it to the threshing floor and they would literally grind it with, um, sometimes it was a wheel, sometimes it was, um, it was called a, I'm gonna have the word for it. It was the, tribulation it was a trimble is what it was called and that was a board with holes bored into it where they could place rocks now the threshing floor could be inside or the threshing floor could be outside um, the threshing floor was a large area it was flat it was sometimes compacted ground sometimes there was actually the bedrock was revealed underneath that. I thought that was awesome because I thought of that as a picture of Jesus. Like he was, li he's literally part of the threshing floor. Um, so they would bring the grain to this place and it was a place that belonged to the whole community. It wasn't one person that had a threshing floor. This was a place that belonged to the community and everybody had a place on it. And so during the harvest season, people would spend all their time there. They wouldn't even be in their homes because everything was concentrated on this harvest and getting the, uh, you've heard the word, I'm sure, the chafe or the outer shell of the grain to, to clean that away from the grain. So some other things about the threshing floor is 
the only way to get the grain from inside the husk is this immense amount of pressure. And so when they would take the, um, the sled, I guess you could call it, that had the rocks bored into it, when they would take that, it would be led by usually two oxen and they would just go around and around in a circle until they had broken away the outer shell of the, the wheat. Now, why is this important in our walk with, with Christ? Well, a lot of people have taken this analogy of the threshing floor and it can be applied to uh, the book of Revelation. It can be applied to the end times, the different harvests, the different rains, the different gathering of um, the different harvest, the wheat and the, uh, I forget what the other one was, but I really believe tonight in this study, God wants to focus on that harvest as you, you and me. Um, we are that, that wheat harvest. We are that grain harvest. Um, and before we had to be harvested, we had to be cut down from the stock that we were in. We had to literally be removed from the field that we were growing in, right? So when God found us, or when we came to God, when we seek him out, what that you were in. And when you come to the threshing floor, there has to be a pressure put on you. There has got to be this tribulation, this immense amount of grinding pressure that breaks away the outer husk. Now, when God was talking to me about this earlier, he was showing me that that outer husk is literally your flesh, your flesh that houses your desires, your emotions, your dreams, your aspirations, all those things, your, your insecurities, your walls, everything that you've put up between you and God. Everything that you've put up that, that wants to stay alive. But God says those who try to save their lives will lose it. And those will, who lose their lives will find it. So we know that there has to be this crushing. There has to be this transformation process. You, you need to be in the threshing floor. And not only was this a place for the harvest, but this was also a place of intimacy. And we see the intimacy when we um, see in Ruth. Uh, chapter three, verse three, that that is the place that Ruth went to meet Boaz. And that is a place that he was, he was having his, his food, he was having his drink, and he went to sleep there. Like I said, during the time of harvest, they literally slept at the threshing floor. If you had a large barn, you could have had two or three threshing floors. Like it just depended on the, the size and the wealth of the community. But it was where they lived. It was a lifestyle. This threshing floor was a part of their culture. It was a part of who they are. And I know we've been talking about that um, deliverance and, and humility and um, repentance. All these things are an ongoing process for a Christian. So even though you may be the wheat harvest this time, um, and you have to go through an immense amount of pressure to remove that outer husk, the next time you may be the, I have to, I have to look it up because it's going to bug me if I don't. It was the wheat harvest and there was one other harvest, the barley harvest. With the barley harvest, they did not need to be taken onto the threshing floor. There's a next step after the threshing comes the winnowing. And you hear the scripture where it says that Jesus had his winnowing fan in his hands. And if you don't know what that is, it kind of looks like a pitchfork. And after they would um, finish threshing the wheat, what they would do is they would take the pitchfork and they would throw the wheat in the air and everything that was light, like the husk, which is the chafe, and the straw would, would fly away in the breeze and the grain that was good would fall back to the floor. And that's the way they separated the outer shell and the hay and all that other parts of the, the plant is in the wind. Right, so when they did the winnowing, it would usually happening, happen in the evening when there was a nice breeze. So the threshing floor was also usually up on a hill. And so here we have another picture, if you can just, just see it with me, 
a, a foreshadowing of what Jesus was going to go through. He literally was broken on the rock when they took him up to crucify him. And then they, he was tossed up into the breeze, like in the winnowing, right? And when his, the spirit left him. So we see that. But the thing about barley is that they didn't have to put it on the threshing floor. It was so, it was in such a way that it would let go of the shell easily. All they had to do was put it in the winnowing and the shell would fly away. So I feel like that's a picture of where we are with God. Sometimes we are the wheat harvest and we really need a lot of pressure. We really need that threshing floor. We need to be just like, just picture it, just ground against the stone, the rock. We just have to be ground against it until God can lift us up and remove that outer shell. But sometimes we are the barley and with the barley all we need is for God to just throw us up we just need that breeze to come over us we just need that that gentle breeze to come and wash away the things that aren't of him anymore um I just thought that was a, a beautiful picture if you're interested the third harvest is also um the grapes which also had to go through a crushing just wasn't on the threshing floor um but Jesus gives us this picture in so many scriptures we hear about the threshing floor um, over and over again. And where I want to really highlight something that I didn't know, that the first temple built by David was actually built on a threshing floor. So if you look in 2 Samuel chapter 24, I'm just going to kind of skim through the beginning to catch you guys up. But this is the story where David, it says that, it says that um, God was angry with Israel. And so he stirred up David. There's another corresponding scripture where it actually says that Satan was allowed to tempt David. So we see that regardless of the hand that was used, God was angry. And he allowed, he allowed the devil to come in and tempt David. And he tempted David to pull a census of his army. Now you might say, well, that's not a bad thing. You know, they did census all the time in Israel. Why would that be an issue? Now, a lot of people believe that the issue was is because David started getting built up in his pride and he saw his strength in the army and not in God. And so there is this, this unspoken thing that there was an issue with David's heart that he was beginning to become prideful and he forgot where he stood. He forgot it was God who put him there. He forgot it was God who won the battles. He started to get built up in his pride. And so he sends his men out to go count the army. And another um, theologian also says that there may have been an issue because normally when they did a census, there was a tax put on every um, man who was 20 years or older. And they think that there's a possibility David didn't collect that tax. And that tax went directly to God. It was never to be given more. It wasn't to be given less. It was a half a shekel. And it was for every man who was 20 years and above. And it went directly to God's house. So there is also a thought that he didn't collect that. So there may have been, on top of the pride, a theft from God. Um, so when the man returns... And it takes a while. It takes nine months and 20 days to count all the soldiers in Israel and in Judah. And when they come back and give him the numbers, David all of a sudden is completely troubled. And he knows he did something wrong. <laughs> it's like uh, nine months later and he, his sin has given birth to death. Um, and here it comes because here comes the prophet at that time and we'll start here in 2411. It says, when David got up in the morning, um, a revelation from the Lord had come to the prophet Gad, David's seer. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I am offering you three choices. Choose one of them and I'll do it to you. So Gad went to David and told him the choices. He asked him, do you want three years of famine to come on your land? Do you want to flee from your foes for three months while they pursue you or have a plague on your land for three days? 
none of those seem like very good choices. <laughs> uh, so now think it over and decide what answer I should take back to the one who sent me. David answered Gad, I have great anxiety. Please let us fall into the Lord's hands because his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel from that morning until the appointed time from Dan to Beersheba. And if you don't know, the reason they specified Dan to Beersheba is that's um, technically the whole, uh, that's like from the north to the south. That is like the appointed areas that show the whole nation is those two cities. Um, so from Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men died. Then the angel extended his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it. But the Lord relented concerning the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, enough, withdraw your hand now. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Anaruna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel striking the people, he said to the Lord, look, I am the one who has sinned. I am the one who has done wrong. Please, these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and my father's family. Gad came to David that day and said to him, Go up and set up an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Araniah, the Jebusite. David went up in obedience to Gad's command, just as the Lord had commanded. And Aruah looked down and saw the king and his servants coming towards him, and he went out and bowed to the king with his face to the ground. So, it goes on to talk about that David bought the threshing floor and the oxen from him for um, 50 shekels, I believe, of silver, 20 ounces, 20 ounces of silver. So what does that have to do with anything? That sounds a lot like what we're going through today, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> that sounds a lot about what, what we are facing as a nation. Um, there was a lot of pride in David's heart. He realized he was wrong, yet he still didn't really apologize. He still didn't really come to God and repent. He just said, like, God, let it be in your hands, like, whatever you're going to do, but didn't actually take the time to say, God, I'm wrong, until devastation of 70,000 deaths. And it was after all those deaths that he finally said, God, no, it was me. It was me. The sin is not on these people. It was me. Um, so the threshing floor became an altar to God. It became a place where we humble ourselves before God. It became a place where when we see the devastation going on in the nation, we can come before God and stand in the gap. You might be one to say, well, I'm not the one who legalized gay marriage, or I'm not the one who says it's okay to have abortions up to nine months old. Yes, but we are all in this nation, and as children of God, we have the ability to come before God and say, Jesus, please, I need you to intercede on this behalf. Jesus, please, I need you to forgive me for whatever part I took in this, and please show mercy on our nation. Please forgive me. And so, man, I just, there's just so much on the threshing floor. Because then when I started looking at the threshing floor as what later became the temple, then you start getting into the, the study of the tabernacle. You start getting into the fact of that outside in the outer courts of the tabernacle is first where the animals were slaughtered, right? And we can kind of, we can kind of equate that to the threshing floor, that beginning, that crushing, that breaking. Because inside of the wheat, that seed contains DNA the same way our blood contains DNA. The same way, because God said that every seed would have in itself the ability to reproduce a fruit just like it. So that seed literally has to carry the DNA of wheat. And just like the animal, that blood carries the DNA of that animal. That's why the animal and the sacrifices must always have been spotless because their record was in their blood, right? So it's like when we come to God, we have to allow ourselves to be broken down to the point where the only thing he sees is the blood of Jesus. 
when we're carrying that outer shell and we're going in self-righteousness, when we're going in pride, when we're going in, in, in selfish desires, God can't work with that. He's got to allow us to be broken down. He's, he's got to allow us to just shed that old layer because he's got to get down to the DNA. He's got to get down to the blood of Jesus. And something incredible about that blood is it just shows himself. God wants to see himself in it. And as I was thinking, I was like, God, that's so funny how you would talk about the wheat in this way. Because the thing you would make with wheat is bread. And Jesus says that he's the bread. And I was like, it's so interesting that Jesus had to be crushed to make that bread. And what's even more interesting is that if we are to be a replica of the archetype, which is Jesus, who was just a replica of God, who was a, a perfect image of God, then that means we're the bread. That means our, our life has to be broken down to the point where it's a bread that somebody else can eat. And when they eat it, they receive the DNA that can make them look just like God. Right? So in all these different areas, it's like you can't miss the process. And it's like, even though Jesus paid the price for all our sins, he said that we had to walk the same walk he did. If he was broken, we got to be broken. If he was selfless, we got to be selfless. If he fed 5,000, we got to feed 5,000. Literally, the fruit of our lives has got to replicate something that can give life and sustenance. It says all you need is water and bread. So that means that I should be able to bring them to the well of living water, which springs up in me, and I should be able to give them of the bread of life, which is in my DNA. I should carry the exact ingredients that somebody else needs to become exactly what Jesus was and is and be that reflection of God. But it all starts in the threshing floor. It all starts in the breaking. It all starts in the, in the tribulation. And there's one other step after the winnowing. So first we had the threshing, right? We have to be broken. We have to lose the husk. We have to lose that outer shell. And then Jesus comes. He comes with the winnowing fan and he throws us up in the breeze, the Holy Spirit comes by and it takes away everything that's too light. And what has weight, what carries weight falls to the floor. Because we carry a weight when we carry the blood of Jesus. And so that grain falls to the floor. And it says the father gathers the grain into his storehouse, right? And so he gathers it up and he gathers it up. But it's not ready yet to be turned into bread. It's not ready to be ground yet. So then they have to take it. And they have to take it through the sieve, the sieve, the sieve. They have to take it through the sieve. And it's like um, if you've ever baked and you have the, the, the screen that you put the flour through to take out all the lumps, it's kind of the same idea of a big. It's like a meter across. So it's big and they put all the grain in it and they shake it. And they got to shake it to get all the rocks out. They have to get the stone out. They have to get the little pieces of stone. And when I thought about that little pieces of stone, I wasn't thinking about Jesus anymore. I was thinking about that stony ground. And I was thinking about the, par the parable that Jesus says, I said, the seed can't grow on stony ground. So if you make a bread that's containing the stony ground, now you have a contaminated bread. And it even goes so far into the history to say the Egyptians used to skip this step. And they, when they made the bread, they left the stone in it because it was easier to grind. Sometimes it's easier to grind when you don't go through the shaking. Sometimes it's easier to grind when you don't go through all the, the bumps and the bruises. Even Jesus talks to Peter. I don't want to mess the scripture up. Where was it? He talks to Peter and he warns him. And he says, no, it's not where we are. Hold on. He warns Peter. My notes are gone, like out the window, guys. It's just, it, they're gone. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll get you the scripture later. But he, Luke twenty two thirty one. that's where I'm going. He warns Peter and says that Satan has asked for permission. Thirty-one. 
Okay. This is what Jesus says to Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, look out. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you and your faith, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So Jesus was already telling him, listen, Satan wants to shake you up. He's, you're going to bump against some rocks. You're going to bump against some other Christians. You're going to bump against some other things. They're going to come, but you know what? It's necessary. It's necessary to clean you. It's necessary to get that stuff out of you. It's necessary for those things to come out. I heard a great, I think it's a uh, Todd White that says, um, what comes out of you when you get squeezed? Because if you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. So when you squeeze you, do you get Jesus? <laughs> or do you get cursing and swearing and frustration and, and depression, right? So when the pressure comes, what comes out of you? So this was another step that, that was brought to cleanse. And in the translation that Perry Stone talks about, he says, um, it says, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. He said a correct translation for that would actually be, and when you have repented, strengthen your brothers. Right? Because we know that the trials that we go through, they bring out the ugly things in us. And then we repent for those ugly things and they can fall through the sieve. But as long as we're still connected to those things, as long as we're saying, well, it's going to be easier once we hit the grinding stone. If we just hold on to this sarcasm, if we just hold on to this anger, if we just hold on to this attitude. Yeah, but what's going to happen when somebody comes along? the people that you're feeding when you don't let go of that stony ground. And so after they go through that, um, that sieve, that's when they can actually take it and they can grind it and make it into a flour and make it into a bread. But it has to go through the process. It has to go through the breaking. It has to go through the cleansing. And it all has to be done at the hands of the father can't do it on your own because who's waiting at your doorstep but the angel of death it's only god that calls off that angel it's only god and it's interesting because when i first started researching i first started praying and reading and i noticed that a lot of people equate um the chafe to non-believers i thought that was interesting because it didn't look like that to me it didn't look like God was saying he was separating the believers and the non-believers. No, it looked like he was separating me from a part of me <laughs> because that shell was on the wheat. Because later he goes on in Malachi and he talks about that the stubble that's left in the field is those evil non-believers, the people who do evil. They were literally good for nothing. They don't use it to make bricks. They don't use it to feed the animals. They literally just burn it. <laughs> they burn it along with the chafe. They burn the stubble and they burn the chafe because none of it was good. And if you think about it, this is something just that God has talked to me about. We literally, let me put it this way. The devil thought he had us when he got us to sin. Because we were three in one and there was a connection that could not be broken. Right? We were flesh, we were soul, we were spirit. And the devil figured, well, I got them to sin. That's it. They're done for. God is going to have to send them to hell. There's nothing but the lake of fire in their cards now. But when Jesus came and he went to the threshing floor and he broke his body, and he made a separation from the body and the soul. Then when we join in that death, we are able to bring death to our flesh, which contains all sin and gives us an exodus from our very body. Because our body will die. It will burn just like the chafe. Can't take our body with us. God said he's going to have to give us a new body because he had to condemn all of our sin within our flesh. But here's the problem. Are you going to hold on to that flesh? Or are you going to let it go? It's not about believer or non-believer. It's about, are you going to allow the crushing to separate you from the very thing that's going to bring you death if you don't let it go? 
And it's not a one-time process. Like I said, God willing, every other time after that, you can be the barley <laughs> and just go through the winnowing. And God just throw you up into the breeze of the Holy Spirit and everything that's not of him will get wiped away. But man, I have realized that I've had to go through some wheat harvest more than one time. More than one time. But there's always, God has a good plan. So it's not for nothing. It's not just for you. It's for the people that you will become sustenance for. It is about your family. It is about everybody you come into contact with. You literally are the embodiment of bread and water walking around on this earth. And you have to allow that bread to be purified just like Jesus was. And you have to allow that water to not be a mix of fresh water and salty water, to not be a mix of hot water and cold water. You have got to be pure. You have got to allow the Holy Spirit to help you to be holy, set apart, sanctified, different than everybody else. It is a necessity. It is not a choice. It is an obligation to be holy. It is for life and death because we see back when David first sinned, in that way of pride, 70,000 people died. That's a lot of deaths on one person's hands just because he allowed himself to be built up of pride. And I thought it was pretty interesting that it was nine months for that sin. So let us not be slow in repentance. Let us not be slow in humbling ourselves before God. Let us continue to ask God to seek out our heart, to search the secret places, to sift us. And if that means shaking us up, if that means the enemy bring tribulations, if that means allowing us to bump our heads up against some rocks, then let it be done. Because the end result is glorious. The end result is being that image of Christ for everybody in this world. So it's no longer about you. The old you is cast off. The part of you that had its own thoughts and desires is gone. And it's just about you and God. It's just about that threshing floor becoming the worship floor, becoming that place of intimacy, becoming the holy of holies, becoming the place that you meet God in the midst of all the the drama, in the midst of the tribulation, in the midst of the, the winnowing, in the midst of the, the, the sieving, God is there in all of it. And I think that's it. <laughs> and my notes are out the window. <laughs> and I think that's it. And I'm going to um, thank you guys for being here with me. And I'm going to give it back to Pastor Dan. Thank you, guys. I don't even know what to say. That was that was awesome. Um, now this was so good. Uh, this was really good. I love the way that you broke uh, a lot of information down and uh, made it very understandable for us. Um, but before we get into takeaways, I want to know if anybody has any questions. Um, you can raise your hand because now I'm I'm back in charge. I do the hand raising thing. Um, so. Tony, thank you so much for raising your hand. Um, <laughs> go ahead. I, I actually just want to know if you'll be able to make your notes available. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. very serious, though. <laughs> I'll try to get them a little bit more structured, and then I'll put them up. <laughs> I would love to have those and then to be able to go back and rewatch the teaching. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah. That's a great question. That that's that would be awesome if you can do that for us, Judy. Um, you can upload it on the, the group and uh, um, yeah, that's a, we're definitely gonna need to refer back to that. Watch this several times. Um, was there another question? I thought I saw another blue hand pop up. Okay, 
I am, I feel like I'm going to uh, continue recording the takeaways because I think this is going to go in a, uh, an amazing, go ahead, Tony. Oh, you're I was trying to, I was you're, to trying to, <laughs> you're trying to jump in. I, I, I need to set a go time. Ready, go. Um, <laughs> uh the the takeaways i think is going to be very very uh important to the teaching so i'm going to continue recording go ahead tony okay Whew. where do i begin where do i begin where do i begin um teacher judy you are like fine dining like the way the lord teaches uses you to teach is like you're sitting at a table and you're literally taking your time and chewing the word however many times they recommend for it to chew and it's slowly being digested and immediately absorbed like that is how i feel when you teach i abs I, I i bless the lord for you it is absolutely and it's refreshing it's it's refreshing it's like you're enjoying you're enjoying the meal but it's the nourishment that that you're really feeling and um lord when i tell you I, just in, in listening to you teach who the threshing floor apparently has been my home um since this whole pandemic began this is my first teaching on it i i have heard the word it's one of those buzzwords that we hear but i've never had a teaching on it and this was the first and i'm so grateful that it was i i am absolutely grateful that it was because it brought a level of it made it gave me a better understanding of why i've been where i've been for the time that I've been there. And as you were getting towards the end of, of the teaching and you were talking about the difference between the wheat and the barley, and and you had already given the the like the analogy of, of bread. And what I heard in my spirit was how you have to add water to yeast to activate it so that the bread will rise. And I was like, well, go on, Lord, with, I am not a baker, but I got that. I got that, adding the water to activate. And I was just like, wow, Lord, like my legs started to tingle on that one. But it, gave, it absolutely gave me an appreciation for what can be a painful process, but it's, it's the process is the way that it is because those are the areas that I have either dug deep within my stony self to bury or that I am too stubborn to let go of. The barley pieces of me blow away so easily, but those hardcore stony pieces that need to be on that and just, oh, I was, this, this, I'm, I'm certain that I will have another share before this night is over, but I just needed to get that off my chest. You have fed us so well tonight you have just i just feel like who just there's just an energy flowing through me right now and i i, I like i said I, I absolutely bless the lord for you you are an a phenomenal teacher and this was such this was such a phenomenal teaching so whew, I, i'm sure i'll be back thank you tony would you like to respond judy Sorry, I'm trying to, I haven't used like an actual mouse in I don't know how long. <laughs> You're like, ah. How do I use this? This is antique. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. No, that was so good. And I love that. I love that you have to add water to the yeast to activate it, right? Like the bread can't even rise without the water. Let's do it. Both parts. <laughs> you have to have both parts. Like, you can't do it alone. Like, if you don't have that living water, then it was for nothing. And how many people in the world can go have lived on the threshing floor, but there's never any fruit from it because they never get the water. They never mm. become the bread. They literally just get left that ground up wheat. Mm. Not feeding nobody. Mm. That's good.
and here's the other thing if it, i feel like god just brought back the the story about the woman at the well um now if we just look at the well what is the well there for drinking water so if it's drinking water that means it's purified and it's like his holy water and it's the the thirst that never runs dry um and you need the water to activate the wheat which is the, makes the bread which he is the bread of life so he mixing in all that stuff and we are made in his likeness his image and we're made from from the dust of the ground and 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 the soil and all that stuff and when you add water and wheat and seed and all that stuff it's like it's it has to be good ground you know um and the sifting has to take place and when you were talking about the sifting i could just picture my mother with the flour when she ever she would bake she would sit there with the sifter and i was like oh lord <laughs> so, so um and if i could add two quick shares and then and then i'll continue uh tony while you were speaking what color flags do you use um for for your worship dance um right now the well the only right now but the only <laughs> ones that i have are rose gold and if i'm not if i'm remembering correctly i believe they're actually called refiner's fire i need to go mm. back and look but they're rose gold okay well, i heard the lord i i saw a vision of you and it was like a uh it was like a uh, like a goldish yellowish color, a bright color. Um, so that's why I asked you, because I saw you using the worship flags. And so I heard God say, press, this is the season where you're pressing harder, uh, pressing more with your worship, with your flags. Um, um, I'm just going to leave that there. So pray about that and, and continue on from there. Um, and Judy, I, this has to be your your level up your stepping up your i've never seen you teach the way that you have like you did tonight this was amazing the way that you you brought the word the way that you flowed even though you can throw your notes out the window but the way that holy spirit just brought it through you tonight was a way that i've never seen you teach before and this is your breakthrough you know where, where i really can see you in a space that really um you're able to focus on him and and only him and it's not selfish to do that it's actually encouraged to do that and you know you're in a space by yourself and where you can focus on him and when you focus on him you're not distracted you have all these other things um taken care of and you can do what God told you to do. So the way that you brought it tonight, I can thank God for what he has done with you. And I can't wait to watch you grow even more um, because he, you're, he's going to grow you even more in the teaching aspect and um, keep just being obedient to him and, and all that stuff. So, so uh, thank you. That's, I feel like God wanted me to say that. Uh, anybody else have any takeaways? Okay, I want to step in really quick. I before my... didn't raise your hand. I'm so sorry. <laughs> before before my phone dies here, because I didn't bring my charger. Um, uh, well, Judy, you know that you are a teacher of teachers, and realistically, you don't teach enough. Um, I'm glad that you are taking a course for education. Praise God for that, because that is definitely, I believe, the avenue where God is going to really utilize you mightily um, in ministry and outside of ministry. Um, this word uh, tonight, I knew, I, 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 there was no question that you were not going to deliver tonight. I knew you were going to deliver tonight. Um, and which direction you were going to go, I didn't know. But I love the fact that you bring scripture to life. You give us a visual with the way that you teach. You don't need PowerPoints. You don't need any of that stuff. You're, you're so, you have this, this way of just taking the word of God and, and, and delivering it in a way where we can see it. 
Um, and, and I wasn't even in a position where I could take down notes because there's so much that you said that I could be sharing here tonight. But the one thing that I really, really love is how you incorporated Jesus and how his body was broken and how he was the bread. And I mean, and the, just the whole thing with David and the repentance and how our nation looks that way right now. And and how uh, King Solomon's uh, um, uh, place, uh, I can't even think of what it's called right now, his kingdom his was built on the threshing floor. I believe it was King Solomon that you mentioned um, here tonight. But just the, you just took it on so many different levels and then just brought it all back together. Um, and the main focus was still Jesus. And then the other thing that you had said that I was like, oh my God, I could just run right now in this house. When you were talking about the DNA and you were talking about how every seed has a DNA and then you said how God is looking for himself in the DNA, I almost lost it. I, I just, the way that I visualized that, I was just like, oh my God, I could never really seen it that way. And it was just so like, it just moved me in such a way that I was like, I was just about to jump out of my skin. Um, so you really just bless me here tonight. This is a teaching that I have to sit down and take notes because there was just so much that you covered here tonight. Um, and I wasn't in a position to take any notes, but it just truly blessed my life. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are welcome, Pastor Lissette. And if anybody who doesn't know, she is not in a position to take notes because I am in this beautifully quiet office, which is Lissette's house, because she is at my house with all my kids. <laughs> so I am here in her quiet house, and she is there with like my kids and her kids. There's like nine kids over there. <laughs> So we are all blessed because of Pastor Lisette tonight. <laughs> so I thank you. I thank you for that. <laughs> if I can add, um, when, when my wife was talking, um, I feel like the way that you talked about the harvest too, and, and all the, the three different harvests, that was amazing. The way that you brought it. Uh, and explain the process of each harvest um, and how it coincided with the threshing floor. That was that was really good too. Um, very they're very good. Um, anybody else? Any takeaways from tonight's teaching? Let me jump in real quick just about the harvest. I yeah. feel like um, if you guys get a chance, start studying the harvest. Because I started getting into it a little bit, but I felt like I was getting really sidetracked when I was studying. Um, but he's, I was listening to a teaching about it, and he was talking about that you can't harvest during the rain. And you can't mm -hmm. harvest directly after the rain. You have to wait until it's dried again before you can harvest. And just that really stuck out to me because we know there's the, the latter rain, there's like the former rain and the latter rain, and that all coincides with the times of harvest. So there was a rainy season, everything grows, it gets to mature, the fruit gets to maturity, and then there is a drying, and that's when the harvest takes place. So I just thought that was really interesting because we usually say, well, after the blessing, the enemy comes to try to steal your blessing. And I kind of saw it a little differently tonight is that you are in the midst of the downpour, right? You're in the midst of that, that rainy season, which you always see like a lot of blessings and life and things changing. And then you kind of get to this dry season. And it's not so much that the enemy is coming to steal your blessing. It's that now God is saying, this is the time to harvest. This is the time to humble yourself. This is the time to realize that all that rain was not like you did all these great things and look what you deserve. It was God's season. Like God gave you all that. And now you need to take the opportunity to humble yourself directly after that showering, directly after that rainy season. That's nothing to do with the devil coming to steal up your blessings. It's just time for you to humble yourself. That's like, come on, God. <laughs> And if you look at it from this, if I can piggyback off of that, harvest means to work. Mm 
right? And so many times when we think of like our dry season, oh, I'm going through this dry season. I don't hear God's voice anymore. I don't, you know, I don't have this coming in. I don't, whatever, things have changed. And, and I just feel like I'm in a dry season. To me, that means now it's time to get your work boots on and go to work. Go spread the gospel. Go pray for people. Go out and do something because the harvest is the doing, the gathering. So go gather, go gather his 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 people. Go gather his souls. Go 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 harvest. You know. So I, yeah, that's true. That's so true. We get so caught up into religion and and the enemy trying to do all this stuff. Listen, um, we are God's children, and what's rightfully ours is rightfully ours. And we can't get caught up in what the enemy is trying to do. And if we fo if see, just like just like what we talked about before, um, we are seeking the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. It doesn't say seek the kingdom of God and protect the things that are going to be added unto you. Seek the kingdom of God, all these things are are going to be added unto you. So what that means is when we seek the kingdom of God, things are following us. That means the enemy can cannot, if we divert and change our posture, move our eyes away from the kingdom of God, that's where we give the enemy power. If we get so caught up in, oh, the enemy's trying to come, kill, steal, and destroy, well, if that's our new seeking, if that's where we're seeking, well, that's what's going to happen. If As long as we stick to his principles, the enemy has no place, no power, no nothing. So uh, that's, that's, thank you. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, anybody have anything else? Oh, I didn't raise my hand. Oh, goodness. Oh, I, pull, I pulled a pastor Lissette and <laughs> smacked my hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, really quick. You're good. <laughs> Really quickly, first of all, this is why the recording needed to keep going, um, mm. because there's there's so much more happening here. Um, but as uh, Teacher Judy, as you were speaking just now, talking about the harvest, um, the Lord brought me back. So today, I was led to start studying the book of Acts. <laughs> I'm going to find out why, but I was led to start studying it. And when you were talking about the har the different harvests, and, and what I heard was that there are cycles within each of the branches. So while one may be in a season of rain, of growth, of replenishment, of nourishing the soil, others, other branches as within the body of Christ are in the season of harvest. But as you were saying, Pastor Dan, to harvest souls. And one of the highlights, well, two of the highlights that I had was that um, in my Bible was, um, from the beginning, the church is depicted as a community that actively witnesses their, to their faith in Jesus Christ. And that's part of the harvest, right? You're witnessing to people so that their souls become a part of the harvest when they're in that harvest season. So I, the, it, I just heard cycles and the, brand, the way that the Lord has it established, it's nothing is ever missed. That's what it was. Nothing is ever missed because everything is in its season, in its harvest. It's in its rain season when it's, it needs to be so that nothing should ever be missed if we do what we're supposed to. And that all goes back to this teaching. And, oh, God, God, I just have so much energy going through me right now. When um, Pastor Lissette reminded me of how, when you said about um, the Lord has you on the floor until he gets to the point that he sees himself. And I'm just like, man, just, just imagine if we could all easily be so sifted like the flower, how different the, the, the weight of the flower is after it um, pre-sifting and after it's been sifted. And even now what, I, what I'm seeing is, is, you know, when, when that sifting happens, you can literally, I mean, you can throw the flower up and it's like dust and it spreads. Just imagine if we allowed ourselves to be sifted so that we could spread the way that the Lord intends for us to spread. It was never meant, the, the, that threshing floor is, it's about us, but it's so not about us. It's about everyone else that we're supposed to be able to, to reach 
as we take on a different weight. Because right now, the weight that we're carrying in our flesh is holding us back from the weight that the Lord wants us to carry. But it, it's heavy, but in a different way. I'm, oh, Lord. I am this. I am just... I'm just so, so spent. I could, I'm like Pastor Lissette, I could go outside and run up and down my street right now. I, oof, I'm going to mute myself now. I'm with you, Tony. I am with you. This was a lot of good nuggets in this one. Anybody else? Okay, perfect. Hmm. Judy, if you can just uh, close this out. Um, but before you do, is if there's anybody that, that needs to rededicate their life or that needs prayer that is on this line, um, I'd like to pray with you. Is there anybody that needs prayer? Hi, Nancy. Hi. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. It, uh, it was like a calling to, um, to focus on the importance of the discernment that we have of God's time in our own lives. You know, that, that we can really recognize uh, when is the time uh, of the rain, when is the time to harvest. And uh, it reminds me like the importance of having this discernment of understanding God's times in our lives, in our own lives. So even when I was uh, very late at this meeting, and I, I apologize, <laughs> well, I take this uh, in my heart. So thank you very much because this meeting has been a blessing for me in this uh, few minutes. Amen. And, uh, yeah. It was it was interesting because I feel like God wanted wanted you to speak because he kept directing me towards your your box on on the internet. And that's why I I asked for that because I was I was trying to be obedient to God um and, and I'm first of all I'm honored and I'm so excited to see that you are on here with us. So thank you. Um, and can I officially say we are global? We are multinational nations now. Um, <laughs> praise God. Um, my wife speaks Spanish. So, um, so babe, can you pray for Nancy, please? Absolutely. Hopefully my phone does not die again. I don't have a lot of charge. Pero bienvenida. Y gracias por estar aquí. Muchas gracias por estar aquí um, con nosotros. Y el inglés tuyo es muy bien. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> you so, um, so um, voy a hablar rapidito. El español mío no es muy bien, pero voy a tratar de hablar en español si me, si me das permiso. Don't worry. If you want to do it in English, it's okay for me. Don't worry. Okay. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for Nancy, who you have brought her here all the way from Venezuela. Father, God, she has tuned in. And we are just so blessed, Father, for her just being here tonight. And I just ask, Father God, that you would go Holy Spirit ahora en este momento y que la toques, que la bendiga, Señor. Um, and that you would just wrap your arms around her, Lord God, and just embrace her, even from all of us here, Lord God, that you would just go Holy Spirit and embrace her and reminder of how much you love her and reminder of, of how, how you are always there for her, Father, and that 
um, this moment, Father, was very divine, that even though she got just the end of it, Father, that this is not going to be the last time um, that she will get on this call, Father God, but this is the beginning of something that you are doing in her life. So, Señor, te damos muchas gracias por Nancy, Señor, y, y que siga bendiciéndola a ella, a su familia, a su financia, a su salud, Señor. Um, tócala en este momento, Señor, y de, que ella recuerde cuánto tú la amas, Señor, y que nosotros aquí también la amamos, Padre Santo, y te damos gracias. En el nombre de Jesús, en Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Um, Nancy, what what um, time zone are you in? So I what time am, is it? Mm -hmm. In Venezuela, 8.30 p.m. Oh, okay. It's the same as ours. Okay. So it's, it's the same as ours. We're in okay. Florida. Like that's okay. where that's where we we are. There's people from uh, Maryland, um, Texas, um, people from all over. So uh, know that you have many brothers and sisters over on this side and um I'm, I'm so excited uh i'm happy i'm very happy that you joined so thank you so much for joining us um thank you wow this is special um anybody have anything else before we pray out okay yes hold on no no i'm starting to click <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking down at my nose, the Holy Spirit was like real. About the threshing floor is that the threshing floor wasn't flat. It was always with a little bit of a tilt so that there wouldn't be standing water, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the water. So you never want stagnant water to get into where the threshing is happening. And more importantly, that the threshing floor was surrounded by a low stone wall. So God says, even in the breaking, he's covering, he's protecting you. You won't be scattered beyond the threshing floor. Even when you're going through the breaking and you feel like you're so far away from God, he says, there's this wall around you that can't be moved. There's always going to be that wall surrounding you. And that even in the midst of it, he's there and he's there and he's making sure that you're being watched over and that you're never going outside of this area that he's in control of. Well, that was it. Amen. Amen. That rem you know, and that's how water is, is standing water creates mold, sickness, illness, disease. But when it's moving water, it, it stays clean because you, you have a, a great mixture and if you think about rivers and rock bed and stuff like that, that also cleans and cleanses the water as well, purifies it. So, wow. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Um, Tony, did you want to jump in? I thought you were going to jump in. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> um, okay. Judy, it was interesting because you were saying, hold on, hold on. I was actually going to ask if you can pray us out. Okay. <sighs> Father God, I'm just, I'm so in awe of you. I'm so thankful for you. I just, Holy Spirit, you are amazing. I love to see how you move and you work through us and through the gifts that you have given us, Father God. I thank you that you have truly planted seeds within us that bring forth life. And we just ask you to continue to, to sift us, Lord, continue to remove everything that's not of you. Let us continue to be humble and willing servants, Father God, in your kingdom, Father God. I thank you for Nancy. I thank you for every other man and woman who got on this call today, Father God, because it's all about you, Lord. So I just pray that that part of you that went forth tonight, Father God, that it will continue to multiply in each one of our homes and our lives, Father God. I thank you for the covering that you have around us, Father God. I thank you that you care for us through the process, that you care for us when we are being broken. You care for us when we are being sifted, Lord. And even though some may not understand it, Father God, we stand and we say, we understand, Lord, that it's all about you, that it's about our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's about those who don't know you yet, Father God. So just strengthen us to stand in humility before you, Father God, that we would fall to our faces, Lord, and know that you are the one in complete control, Father God. 
We surrender our will to you, Father God, for your glory, for your honor. Let your will be done and not our own, Lord. And show grace to this nation, Lord, and not only our nation, but to this world, Father God. While many are proclaiming the one world order, we are ca calling out the one true living kingdom of Jesus Christ and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father God. We know that there is one kingdom, but it is not this world system, Lord. It is your world. It is your kingdom. It is your design. It is your plan, Father God. And we surrender to you and only to you, Father God. Let us go through this night praising you, and let us continue to bring glory to him in all things that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the church this evening. Uh, we love you. We thank you. And uh, as always, I always say thank you so much for your offering, your time. To us, we love your offering of time because time is something you can't get back. So that is very, I hold that close to my heart, and, and that's, that's very special to me. So uh, I thank you for your offering. If you guys need us, please reach out to us. Um, Nancy, did you see us on Facebook? I, did, uh, I saw you on the uh, website, the church, ndc.com. Amen. Uh, yeah. Okay, send us an email, okay, so okay. I can give you more information. Uh, I, want you, I want to get you connected with, with uh, our Facebook um, information so you can see more information, and, and we just want to be able to connect with you more. Um, I'll have my wife uh, reach out to you and, um, you know, and if there's anything that we can do to help you, uh, we're here. We're here. We're servants. We're servants of God. And, and that's what we do is, is we do what we can. And um, so I'm honored that you're here. So Thank international. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Really, I think I feel like the Lord is answering my prayers because it's not easy to find a small group to study the Bible. And I was like, oh God, I really want a small group of people who really, you know, like uh, feel the passion for you and for your word and for doing your will. And well, I, I feel that he's answering my prayers. So Amen. thank you so much. Amen. For, there is also, um, Shanna, I'm, uh, you're reminding me, I, I see that, Shanna. So there's also a women's ministry. It's called Queens for Christ, um, which, which we are uh, brothers and sisters. Like, like our ministry and Queens for Christ ministry is like we're together and um, very close friends of ours. And I want to get you linked up with them as well. Uh, they meet on, Shanna, you guys meet Tuesdays and Thursdays, correct? Yes, sir. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So, so what I can do is, is so if you email the church um, the, where you found our, our uh, uh, information on, I will send you the Queens for Christ um, information. I'll send you more of our information. So then that way there you can get plugged in. Uh, Queens for Christ is, is also, it's a, an amazing ministry and you're going to grow in there. You're going to be taught and, and it's amazing. We're actually teach my wife and I were actually teaching tomorrow evening. So I would be honored if, if you would join tomorrow night on Queens for Christ and, and we'll get you that, um, we'll get you that information, uh, like the link for, for zoom as of well. Course. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, Sienna, are you able to put that link in this chat? I, Nancy, do you see the chat? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Um, oh, perfect. Shanna's going to post the link here. Uh, okay. So then that way there, this is for tomorrow evening. And then uh, she'll post the link in, in the start time. And it's the okay. same starting time of, of what you're in. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I got it. Uh, 8 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
and we meet every Wednesday. Um, so Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. You are now booked. <laughs> um, so thank you. Uh, so we will see you tomorrow evening. Remember to send us an email. We'll get you further linked up and connected with, with our, amen. Um, we'll get you further uh, connected with us. So, Perfect. okay. Thank you so much. You're